Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and this video is not about a plugin, although I'm going to mention it in the plugin video, because what we're doing here is uh, how to do this. Whoa. How you feeling? You feeling all right? How's this work for you? Check it out. We can. do many strained psychedelic colors. Let me make that go back for a moment. Here's the deal. This video is going to walk you through the construction of one of a set of filters, such as the one that I've just showed you. It's not an audio plugin, but it's kind of like a video plugin because it is a lookup table and lookup tables are things like this. See, it says original PNG. I found this in the guts of the OBS install, and you can select them by going to this control, and it says filters for Blackmagic device, which is what this is. So I went to this window. Let's just open it again. And the possible filters I have, including other things like chroma keys, luma keys, delaying the video, and so on, scrolling, sharpening, is apply LUT. I can browse for that. And as you can see, this collection that I've got has a bunch of weird things in it. You can see the difference between the one image here, which is what the normal LUT looks like, and what's being showed in this preview, which is Das Boot LUT. And if I go to that one, everything starts looking really freaky indeed. So how do you make this kind of stuff happen? Now, a, an equally fair question is, why would you make something like this happen? And the answer is because you're doing weird freaky music, or you're doing music videos, or you're just wanting to make a psychedelic effect. Or are you just wanting to take advantage of the fact that it's really easy to do this with um, video editors? You know, something like Final Cut or Premiere or anything like that is going to be able to load lookup tables. They're normally used for things like teal and orange lookup tables to make stuff look flashier. But as you can see, you can go completely full tilt bonkers with them. which is, of course, what I've done here. And uh, I may include uh, DOS boot, but what I intend to do is talk about what you can do with ones like this. What we've got here is also a LUT. It's also at full strength, but it's a gradiated series of exposures in that what I've done is come up with an algorithm, just like I do for making plugins. But this algorithm is for making increasingly psychedelic effects out of this particular image processing. And it's using a technique called, uh, and I gotta remember what it's called. Um, well, I'm gonna be using this program. And what I can do is duplicate a thing, and then go to a uh, adjustment layer. Posterize is what makes this happen. So I'll hide this for a moment. What can posterize do? Well, this is 64 levels of posterize producing a psychedelic effect. And as we can continue to look at this in the, uh, the preview here, you can see that uh, Oh, it's not making it any larger. Well, this makes it a little bit larger. You can see that as I keep going, the image that is originally very ordinary, and again, a DOS boot LUT is crazy and does extreme things. A teal and orange one like this one looks almost the same as the original. And this one 
that's using posterize in an interesting way. Starts off looking very normal. And then as you keep introducing more, you start to see effects happening here. And then as you continue going, the effects become more and more aggressive until they're super duper extreme. And what that looks like in the image, you can see on this little preview here. And I can just step through these. 16, things are starting to hint. My, my hope is that you can start, um, there will be a way for OBS to step through these over time or automate them or randomize them or something like that. I don't know when that's going to happen, but my chances of getting it are probably slightly better than if it was strictly a um, closed source commercial product. As you can see, this is starting to get a little weirder. And I'm going to go back to our full on image. And this is 12. And we got eight. My camera is in the way. Don't mind me. Seven starts to get very obviously freaky, but there's more. Because the idea of going through these in this way is that it's like filters. It's like filters that you could buy for a lens where you can get them in different grades. And it's like quarter, half, one, two, four, or so. With these, larger numbers make it less obvious because it's working from that uh, posterize thing. So here's five. Four. Also, if you are out of focus, which I can do now, it can improve the effect of it to some extent. So we can get uh, weirder gradients and shades of color if the focus is not exactly on. We'll go back to the in-focus look here. And then again, that is uh, four. I'm looking behind my light, don't mind me. And then three is super intense. And then two is so intense that it's like wrapping around to become normal again. Also note that you can adjust the exposure to mess with how things are working. And you'll notice that the look of this is, uh, I'll go back to like eight or something. The look of this is trying to maintain the original color, which you might think is automatic. It's like, well, of course it's doing that. No, 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 it really isn't. Um, what I'm going to do now is go to another one, which was our teal and orange special effects. Here is the raw signal. And then this is the overly hyped um, video maker, uh, flashy, fancy pants YouTuber thing. And I will leave that while we go and start looking up. How do you turn this into the craziness? Now, here's our first step. You see that there. You can get it out of the Gods of the OBS install or find it in other places or whatever. You basically want just a picture. It is just a picture and it looks like that. And you can see it's got all these little color gradients. You may ask what would happen if you flipped it around and uh, terrible things, nothing good. We might get into that 
uh, later, or it can be something that you yourself can discover as you start fooling around with this stuff. Because yes, you could just take MS Paint and draw something horrible in here, and what it will do is cause crazy mosaic flickering effects. But what we're gonna try to do is something a little more sophisticated. So I've got a image loaded up, and this is just grabbed off the camera. This is obviously my sorry little face, but you see it seems like I'm thinking about something. What I'm thinking about is a copy of this lookup table. As you can see, it's the same one that I had. It is also in exactly the right size, like at 100% size, that's how big it is. If I was to take this and hit the marquee tool and select it, do a copy and then new from clipboard, it's going to give me another one. And this is Affinity Photo, which I quite like for this purpose. I like it for adjusting things and it's reasonably priced compared to like Photoshop. And if you're copying something against a transparent background, it's gonna copy only the stuff, the pixels that it sees. So what it's done is it's given me exactly 512 by 512 pixel image. This is gonna come in useful. We don't need to keep it and we'll close it. And in fact, I can put this back up to full size. So here's the thing. If we don't have anything selected, then anything we do here is going to change everything. For instance, say I go to hue, saturation, and luminance, and I go, let's make everything more saturated like this. See what's happening? I have made my image off of my camera, and you can use any sort of image as long as you're happy with what you're gonna be doing to it. That has become much more saturated but you can see that I'm also processing the lookup table and the lookup table contains every color that you could possibly have. So what it's doing in that lookup table is applying the same changes to all of the stuff in there and everything in the lookup table is being processed the same amount. What's gonna happen is if you select that lookup table and stick it in OBS, and you run that on your camera feed, your camera feed is going to look exactly the same as I've got here with what I've done to the image. And this is very powerful because, let me just delete this and we'll go back. You can get away with a lot here. For instance, we can do select color range. And I can go color range, select reds. The exact plugin, the exact um, program, doesn't matter. Like I think, like in Photoshop and also in this, uh, no, apparently not, I guess I just, no, I, I just hid the whole thing. I was looking for the hide uh, marching ants. Never mind. that was just a stray thought. If it was in Photoshop, it would have hit marching ants. Sometimes when you spend time on a program, you start thinking in the language of that program. And it's worth knowing about that because then you can try to find other programs like this one in many ways uh, does do what you expect if you're following like old Photoshop ideas. In this case, doing Command H to hide marching ants is not one of those. I bet in the select menu I can though. Or possibly not. Yeah, I should not spend too much time fooling around with this. So here, check this out. Now notice that I've got reds selected and the reds are gonna be selected in a gradient and the marching ants are just obscuring everything that I'm trying to look at. But on the other hand, they're showing what's happening. And you can see that in the lookup table that I'm editing, it's got only some of those selected. Now, I, now it's time to play uh, filters and adjustments and things, but which filters and adjustments? Don't mind me, I'm trying to look behind my light here, which is in the way. What if I did distort? 
and I am taking my reds and I am applying a massive distortion on them. Well, this is not in any case going to give me the same appearance in the lookup table that it will in this image editing program. And the reason is, although it'll probably do some pretty aggressive things, as you can see from what it's doing in there, but it's not going to look the same. And that's because this is applying a thing that moves pixels around. But what I need is stuff that is going to change the intensity and color of pixels. And I can select any ones that I want, but I can't move anything from where it started. So we'll cancel out of this. Granted that it would do something intense that way. And we're going to go to say curves and our curves. Actually, there is no point operating on anything other than the red channel because that's what we've got selected. And we're going to make the red channel go inverted. So and if we do this and then deselect command D, this is now a color effect that I could apply in OBS. Like if I save this out, it'll work as a color effect because what I've done is I've done an aggressive remapping of what's in the lookup table. And if we want, we can actually test this out while I'm talking to you. Let's just take a moment as, after I've done this thing. I'll copy that. I will make a new from clipboard. Uh, Affinity wants you to export things to stuff like PNG files. So I'll do that. And I'm also going to go to desktop. And now let us go back here. I'll go back to my full screen just cause. And we're going to go to the filters dialog and go looking for that. It's going to be on the man. My ring light is so in the way. It's nice. I love it. But um, I need to figure out new ways of doing this. Check this out. Our creepy effect is live. And this is exactly what we just saw in Affinity Photo. But now it's a live video effect. Because if you stick with just what is in the, um, you know, don't move any of the pixels around. Keep them exactly where they were. But you can select any kind of color range or do any kind of craziness as long as you're not moving any pixels. And if you haven't moved anything, what you, whatever madness you have wrought will work as a live video effect very quickly and easily using the magic of the lookup table. So here, having done that, let us talk us through the, uh, first of all, we'll go back to our teal and orange look. Let's start doing those psychedelic things. We'll pick one of them. Now, the way that this was done, I'll go back to layers and just make sure that I've, I've, I was going through these and making a duplicate and doing all of my work on the duplicate. If I hide this, it's going to look the same, but it means I have a, a spare copy of both my underlying picture and this lookup table that's embedded into the image. So how do we make those psychedelic effects? Firstly, we want posterize. Posterize is very handy, but note that it is not the only way. Put it, I have a trick in store here that I will share with you. So what we're going to do is pick a number of levels. If it's a large number of levels, it's going to look almost exactly the same. That's 247. That's not going to register as a posterize at all. I started seeing an effect around 64. And as you can see, you keep scrunching it downwards. And you start seeing a more and more obvious thing. And we can see what it's doing to the lookup table as we go. 
But what I had didn't look like this. What I had looked different, and I'll show you why. Let's pick this amount. This is posterized level seven. When you're doing this kind of work, one of the things that is gonna be your biggest help is blend modes. Blend modes can let you hype up colors, for instance, with overlay. And everything got much more con contrasty and crazy. If you're doing things like a selection of a particular color range and you wanted to hype it up, what you could do is go to an overlay mode and just start using opacity. And here's how you do that. You go to zero and then you start introducing what you're looking for. If you're trying to make it a little more contrasty, you can start pushing it until it starts to show up. And what I did for the psychedelic effect is something even more intense, namely difference. You can barely see anything left on this. Difference is going to take the effect from what we made, for instance, posterize. You can see how intense this is. But I'm not just layering it in. I'm using it so that the uh, entrance into and out of these is n the post easiest thing I can do is show you. Uh, experimentation gave me this. It was one of those like, boom, oh, thank you, Muse, because something just came down and showed itself as something to try. Difference overlay mode of exactly 50% starts to give you intense, freaky looks. And this is the look of the Air Window Psychedelic Effect. Like levels of four, that's already pretty extreme. You start getting more subtle, like there's a 24, which I don't actually have included in the, uh, the uh, downloads. And it's obviously cleaner. The thing about it is that overlaying the difference mode in this way, I've knocked down the brightness, but I get to put it back up again later. It's part of an algorithm. I'm gonna be walking through an algorithm and I'll tell you, I did that with all of the ones that I made available. Because it's an algorithm, you can step back and forth between them and get slightly more or less of an effect. Even though it shifts the colors around some, it's not in that extreme of a way. So I'll go back to some of these colors, like you can see that three is doing a very intense effect. Although notice the stuff in the background hasn't changed that much and that's because it has not brightened enough to engage the uh, difference mode. Now, if it was full brightness, things would start looking really insane. And I could make a version of this like that, but what I wanted was something that let realistic stuff, like notice that my eyes look pretty much the same as they did. We'll go to say level seven. You can still see what's happening there. It's not very aggressive. I use that for a music jam and we're going to merge that. And now that's built into this layer. It's one of the things learning how to use programs like this, you need to get used to the idea that you can turn the layer off and there we go back to the original thing. And this is what we've got now. The next thing I did involved this tool, which is a calculator. And it is a hue, saturation and levels adjustment. And what I did was I tracked the different levels of effect and worked out that what I needed to have things look basically the right, like I was getting basically the right colors back again. And I was hyping up the color a little bit, but not so that it was too completely bonkers, was I was going for a hue shift and a saturation shift of 180 degrees divided by the posterized levels plus one, which I think that was seven. So we'll call it 180 divided by eight, 22.5. And I found that the hue shift of negative worked for this. 
So a hue shift of negative 22.5. It took the color a little more yellowy, but it worked better over the widest range of uh, effects and things. And then I had a saturation shift of positive 22.5, which went to 23. And we're leaving the luminosity alone. I could do stuff, but this was a process. And in this case, I'm not doing a blend mode. You could. You could do an overlay, or you could do another difference, or exclusion is something I'm probably going to be looking into as far as, oh, look, exclusion basically put the effect back, except for the background went weird. But in, for this one, I'm recreating what I did. So we're doing normal blend mode at 100%. Um, actually, was it 100%? I'm not sure I remember now. So. We're going to undo that. I think that's the undo. Minus. I kept detailed notes. I just couldn't tell you all the details of what was in them. So I had applied this. And then let's say it wasn't at 100%. I have a note here that says hue saturation. Uh, Actually, you know, I think what that was, I wasn't initially doing saturation shift of exactly that amount. So I didn't actually have that wrong. What I originally had was saturation was always 50%, which is about that much. If you had full saturation, it would be bonkersville, but that is eye bleedingly painful to look at. And although I could make it into a, oh, do you want to see it? Let's have a look at that, and then we'll just go back and recreate this again. We'll merge, and lastly, oh wait, we don't want that. My final thing was I was doing um, a white balance. This one doesn't really need it anywhere near as much, so we'll leave that off. But I was just bringing it up. And now we're going to quickly copy new from clipboard. Let's save it over the previous one. You can see what a crazy looking effect that is. We'll do another test. We'll make this horror go away. And then we'll bring it to life as part of what we see in OBS. Just because how could I not, right? If I make something that torturous, clearly I've got to show you what it looks like live instantly. And so this is what makes this kind of thing fun sometimes is uh, we're doing horrifying things and cranking them up. And there we go. It's actually, it could be uh, the, the face is just straight up orange. And if I adjust the, uh, it has some things to do with the uh, lighting effects. So. It's not as eye bleeding as I thought it was going to be, but then this is the kind of stuff I was telling you about how um, you can make really crazy things happen with lookup tables. There is me making a very, I am in a shirt of many colors now, apparently. That's, that's really quite something. So if you like this effect, then um, I'm not going to save this one. So pay attention to how I made it happen in, uh, Affinity Photo and replicate what I did. And then you too can have a shirt of many extremely bright and glaring colors. And let's make that go away again. We're going to go back to the regular image again. 
So back we go to here. We duplicate our image. We go to the adjustment layers. We deselect. Remember to do this. If you have only the thing selected, you're not going to get the results that you want. You close some of these things that are not relevant and go to posterize. Let's do the five one this time. We want overlay mode of difference. Again, I'm interested to see what exclusion gives me also. That'll be another experiment that might have very different uh, algorithm for how it's balanced out. But in this case, we're doing difference of 50%. Uh, exclusion might not actually have that 50% as part of its calculation. We're going to merge that. We're going to go to hue saturation levels. Did I say this was five? Doesn't matter. We're not saving it on in the collection. And uh, so that'll be 180. divided by six, meaning that my hue shift is going to be minus 30. And the saturation shift is going to be positive 30. And that gets things relatively back to normal, kind of, as long as it's a mid-range color, which is why I chose it. And then what we do after having done those things is we're going to go to levels. And levels, as you can see now, now that I'm not using such an intensely bright one, all of the different things that I did, whether it be a very subtle one with many gradients or a posterize that's really intense, the more subtle it was, the darker this result was. It would go down to about 50% and stay there. And what we want to do is take the white level and bring it down to where we're just touching the edge of this brightness. We could make it even brighter, but I don't I don't choose to. And if the overall look of your effect is too bright, then you could leave it as everything kind of darker. But seeing as this is a look look up table, you might want to have it cover all of the different kind of light effects that you'd have. And as a result, and levels, we don't do anything fancy with overlay modes or anything like that. And we'll merge that. And this is the same as one of the lookup tables in my psych package that I've made available for download. I've just recreated that. But just for fun, let's make it be a little weird by making the colors be Mr. Blue or Mr. Purple. I'm trying to see whether I can do anything crazy while I'm at it, but let's not. And just for fun, let's also fool around with some of these overlay modes. If I overlay my inverted thing, it becomes brighter and all the colors have gone a little weird. Difference again. Oh, that's messed up. Should we do this? I don't know. Exclusions like X-ray subtract. That's interesting. It's very uh, psychedelic there. That's very inverted. Let's keep playing. So now what we're going to do, since it looks like it's inverted and maybe I want to have the original colors back again, is go to curves. What do we get if we just straight up invert the whole thing? That's weird and kind of bright. Uh, curves can be manipulated in these ways as well. So what I can do is just give it more of a an angle 
And again, we can do blend modes in this as well, seeing this is Affinity Photo, if you're interested in that kind of thing. And of course, we could difference it again, or exclusion it, or something like that. Differencing it looks good, but arguably not all that different. Overlay is just weird. So there is difference, and there's normal. Normal is lighter. Difference is more intense. So we're going to pick that, and we're going to see what it looks like to a packety it. So yeah. So basically what we're doing here, this could be a faint level, or you could do a series of them starting with here, and then every time you do a different difference, and it fades between these settings. Seeing as we got this one, let's use this and see what that one feels like. And again, here is the psych lookup table, and we've taken one step beyond, like the uh, Madness song. And new from clipboard, back to our test. We're going to export, because much like many programs like this, save means save in my private file format. You don't necessarily want that. OBS is not going to be able to read Clip Studio or Affinity Photo or any of those things. It's going to want to read a PNG file. At least I think that's what it uses. So we're already on desktop. We'll replace this. We're going to quit out of this and not save either of these. And Back we go to bring up our filters and apply a lot. And I'm going to reload it just because I think that's the best solution. I'm not sure if it's necessarily going to get the new information unless I reload it. And hello, effect that I just made. So here you go. This is what you do if you want to make really wild video effects. Sort of in the Air Windows way, because I'm probably going to come up with more like these. Like the Psych effect is a series of effects from subtle to very aggressive. But the idea is that it preserves uh, basic colors and things in the way that this does not. This is basically arbitrary. I mean, you could have it. But um, it's a, a really aggressive look, this. And I'm not sure how super duper useful this is, because it kind of is going to just make the eyes bleed. Although it follows some of the same rules, like I can go to a blurrier look. And although there are sharp distinctions in color, which means that um, Noise is becoming a color effect. If I blur out the uh, visuals, oh look, I can make the background much sharper. I wind up getting a much more just sort of color areas thing because the blur here helps me out. And that's that's useful also for if you have a poor quality camera or something like that. You can do this kind of nonsense quite happily. And, uh, oh look, it's focused on close-up effects. Did you know that back in the day I used to do drugs? I had to give it up a long time ago because I kept seeing things like this. And I just wanted to go to that place and never leave. And hey, I guess I never did. Here I am. Or more accurately, here I am. I wonder if I can hint at that, though. Let's see. Yeah. Using just a touch of that craziness. 
we can give a color grading here, which is definitely a little on the unusual side. Like, it brings it into this zone, and using just a tiny amount is a very interesting effect in its own right. So yeah, I have been Chris from Air Windows, and as you can see, I don't only do audio plugins. I work on really a whole bunch of stuff, and it's colored by many things in my experiences, including my ill-spent past back when I was younger and wilder. And uh, no regrets, I just can't, I can't uh, carry on that way anymore. But obviously I still remember and uh, value the wild trippy effects that one can have or that one can do. And what we've done together, hopefully, if you've walked through this with me, now you can do this for yourself, is master the art of making wild lookup tables for getting these neat video effects. Because you can combine them with like real world lighting and camera techniques. Like I showed you, out of focus can be very helpful with some of these wild psychedelic techniques. And I think that's going to give you access to a lot of powerful tools for music video making, anything like that. Because OBS is free. You can do this for free. If you can get a image editor that does the same things or anything like them, like any free image editor that lets you load up a picture and embed this lookup table in it, then do color adjustments as long as you're not adjusting any of the positions of any of the pixels. You can do selections of uh, only some of the image. You can select all the reds, you can select all the greens. Any madness you get up to, uh, perhaps with some exceptions, like if you adjusted things over to a particular color and then changed it back again, it might be possible to make stuff where the video output wasn't exactly what you saw on the image editing screen. But most stuff is going to closely mirror what you're able to do in the image editing. So what you do is you learn how to do these overlay modes and things and get creative. Start making looks that are interesting to you and then save out the embedded uh, original lookup table that you stuck into the corner of your image. Any, I think it's best to use like your own footage, your own image, a video grab, for a screenshot of something from one of your videos that's your camera. Because then if you're adjusting and fixing all the details and you've got the highlights just right or you did a particular color correction that the camera needed, that's gonna be baked into what you did. So in a way, it's better for you to do this for yourself rather than to have other people download them. That said, the post that I'm going to make of this will have the Air Windows Psych images, which I will go back to uh, this. Let's go to the 16, shall we? So, this is not that extreme of an effect. This is the 16 grade of it. The numbers increase as it gets weirder and weirder. But you'll notice, that particularly like with my hands and stuff, you can see that it's starting to get a little odd. And the whole fun of this particular adjustment for me, the whole fun of coming up with this one was coming up with something which was accurate to my experience, like my lived experience as an ill-spent youth, and was able to give that thing where somebody who knew, you'd go, oh man, what's happening to my hands? Oh wow. And as the increments increased, the, the number on the filter goes lower and lower, you start getting a more and more aggressive version of it, still in spirit of, you know, how that sort of thing could be. And this collection is downloadable. So if you like this effect, you can have it.
and put it on any of your OBS things. I'm pretty sure, although I have not yet been working with it, I bet you could do it in Final Cut. There's a DaVinci Resolve, anything that'll take a lookup table that looks like the one that I showed you. So, with that in mind, have fun. There are many cool things that you can do with this and a lot of the best tools for it. For instance, OBS, which I'm making a video of now, uh, you can do this for free. In fact, there's another thing. Um, I should also point out if you're making music videos and stuff, and maybe it's a little daunting, it is time honored that people will uh, lip sync their own music. You almost never see even people who look like they're doing the music and singing in the studio, they're probably not really doing it because people contort and make faces and stuff when they're really singing a song. And when they're doing it for the video, they're doing it to try to look cool. So they're like, oh. And this is a really good way of making something like that. Basically just have your music cranking out and do a capture pass with something like OBS. You can run it through the lookup table that you desire and make a uh, sort of video grab of whatever it is that you need. You know, like I've said, I've got this in uh, OBS right here and I got the recording going. And what you do is you do your recording and then you can bring that into a film editor or something. Uh, I haven't worked with this either, but you know Blender has uh, nonlinear video editing, so you could put something like that together in also a free thing. There's ways of making all this stuff work with free tools. And that's kind of the main reason why I'm doing this, is I'm trying to bring awareness for stuff that you can do that might not otherwise be there. So it's my hope that people will like this video and find it interesting. And the reason it's so freaking long is because I am teaching about how to do this particular technique in hopes that people can run with it and start doing that. And just for fun, I'm going to go out on a more aggressive lookup table. I have been very much Chris from Air Windows. You can download these particular lookup tables anytime you want. They are completely available and linked in the description and on the Air Windows post. And I'll talk to you later. Oh, wait. Uh, I am supported by Patreon. Without that, I wouldn't be here doing this. So it's come in real handy. And if you'd like more of this sort of thing, or if you would just like to see some madman like this talking about his ill-spent youth and making lookup tables that resemble who knows what, I would not dare to suggest, then by all means, go and support my Patreon or don't. If you don't have any money, please don't. And I'll keep bringing stuff to you. I don't think I need to do it to this extent again with the lookup tables, because this is the one where I explained to you how it was done. But I could have other collections of lookup tables in future. And maybe you'd like that. Anyhow, this particular lookup table is available. And with that, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.